we can build a lot of smart solutions and technical systems, but if we won't have the citizens with us, then there won't be a sustainable development. We have to do this together. is a city district within the municipality of Malmö. It's built on a greenfield area and it's still being developed. It's new, so there were more or less nothing there before. My name is Pera Berna. I work for Eon as a project manager within our sustainable city program. And one of them is Hylje. The city of Malmö approached Eon in early stages of city development and started the dialogue. Could we utilize Hylje as a testbed showing how can we enable energy in a sustainable way and what kind of technology do we need in order to do so? I think about 20 years ago, Malmö, it was empty and it was gray. <laughs> Nobody wanted to live in Malmö. Malmö was a very post-industrial place. Nothing much was happening and it was kind of depressive. The change in Malmö started with, uh, with the bridge. And a lot of big projects started. Öresundsbrun, the bridge to Denmark, turning torso. The city district Hylle is also part of that. Ja, min man var född på Hylje, Hylje skol, uppvuxen på Hylje skola. Och då var det en av vision. Sen har det varit en väldigt stor positiv utveckling. Det har byggts mycket runt omkring överallt. Det är fantastiskt bara för alltså, allt som har hänt. Så det ska bli kul att följa hur det fortsätter att utvecklas. Something has changed and now people talk about Malmö in a positive sense. I uh, try to make the world better. I was a sustainability coordinator for the city of Malmö and they have been very clear with their vision. We want a sustainable city. One part was to make sure that Hylje is supplied with renewable or recycled energy. And the problem with that is that uh, renewable energy in many cases are weather dependent. So we can't really steer when the wind is blowing or when the sun is shining. And then it becomes much more relevant to see how can we store energy and also how can we find flexibility within the infrastructure that we are developing to cope with these variations. Hulia is a futuristic energy efficient city already in use today. Energy for Hulia is produced from solar energy, harvested from the sun, biogas, digested from organic waste or sludge, waste energy distributed by district heating and captured from incinerated waste that would otherwise be thrown away. Helia's buildings can store energy within their structure and produce heat and power. All the buildings are interconnected by a smart power grid called the EctoCloud. We have almost 400 buildings connected, so we are learning a lot, and this is now being scaled all over the city of Malmö. It's like a giant super brain that understands the energy use across every building in Hulia and will redirect the flow of resources where and when needed. It can even foresee events, taking into account things like weather forecasts. The whole city is like a skate park. Like every ledge has a metal bar on it, which makes it easier to slide and grind those. It's much easier to make friends while skating. I didn't know anybody. Now I know everybody in the class that skates, and I know a lot of people in the park that skate. So in just two weeks, I've started to get to know Malmo just by me skating. 
I think there is, especially because everything is so connected, that you have like kind of this collective responsibility for everything, for being sustainable. The buses are going on biogas, they're driving on our food waste, which is super cool. We have the beach where basically everyone is hanging out. When it's winter, we're going to the sauna. And it's also, it's all happening on a social level. There are Facebook groups that can show which uh, fruits you can pick from the trees, which uh, nuts you can get in the park. Lots of chefs are foraging. They're going into the woods themselves, picking stuff and putting it on the menu. Yeah. From a Scandinavian or a Swedish perspective, I think sustainability has been quite high up on the agenda. Perhaps that is because we have a lot of nature nearby, so we see the value of it. What we seek for now in this modern, uh, stressful life is a place where the mind can get a bit of peace. And uh, for me, that is through concentration. While I'm fishing, I'm, I'm quite focused and I can leave out a lot of the blur from the everyday life. When you ask people what do you really want or like, then they want something sustainable. I think that people want to do the right thing, but if you don't know exactly what is the right thing, then it's really hard to do it. But it's hard because I might rather go on a vacation than pay for something good in about 20 years. So if I know that if I buy one pair of jeans secondhand, that will actually save 10,000 of liters of water. That gives us some reasons to make choices in our everyday lives. We cannot change the world today, but if everyone is doing their part, we can make great uh, changes. And it's like amazing the power we have together. Mm -hmm.